When God created the world, he did so with intentionality. Um, there's a purpose behind everything within the universe, even if we don't fully understand it yet. I mean, for goodness gracious, it took us thousands of years to figure out that the world wasn't flat and yet the sun actually is the one that's stationary and the world revolves around that. So we look at things and we realize that there's a purpose behind everything. Some people call it an intelligent design, but, but everything has a, a purpose and a plan and an agenda. And the same is true with us as human beings. God put a purpose in each and every one of us. Now, there are parts of that purpose that are as specific and unique as there are people in the world. Your purpose is perfectly tailored and designed for you. But there's also parts of our purpose that we all have in common as well. And some of those shared purposes uh, are highlighted at the very beginning of time when God created the first man. And so I wanna really focus on one that we're going to be talking about during this entire series. Genesis 2.18 says this, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is suitable and who is right for him. You see, God created Adam and all of the rest of humanity, which includes you and me, with a longing for relationship and connection. Then later on, God clarified with great specificity uh, two of the most important connections that we as human beings should have. Jesus Christ was asked, in fact, they were trying to trip him up, trying to cause a, a kind of a kerfuffle, if you will. What was the greatest commandment? And this is how he answered, Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Then he ends with this, the entire law and all of the demands and the teachings of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Now notice what Jesus highlights here. He says that the two most important commands from God are to connect with God and then to connect with each other. More specifically, we are to love God and we're to love each other. God created all of us with a purpose and the intent that we should connect with Him and connect with each other. Which brings us to the big idea for today. We were created for connection. We were created for connection. Earlier this year, uh, I did a whole series on being connected with one another, and I talked about the fact that, that when you look at a Lego, you know what its purpose is. You know it's to, to connect with another piece, and you and I are, are created the same way. But even though we're created for connection, we tend to drift towards isolation. Even though our purpose and, and our desire is to have connection with other people, we tend to drift towards isolating ourselves from others. Now God's perfect plan and purpose is for you to enjoy an honoring and amazing relationship with Him, but also to enjoy deep and fulfilling relationships with other people. The problem is, is that even though we're created to connect, we drift towards isolation. And, and drifting or drift is most commonly defined as a slow but steady progression away from something, usually brought about by some outside force. And to help you think about it this way, think about uh, any time you've been at the ocean and you see a piece of wood in the water. It's drifting, it's getting tossed about by all sorts of different things. And in fact, it would be really interesting to see and figure out where every single piece of driftwood ever started from and watch that journey as it slowly just drifted away from its original place. Now I know. Some of you may be thinking, well, yeah, I isolate myself because people suck. <laughs> so I just stay away from everybody, which I totally get. And there's a lot of people out there who probably feel exactly like you do. But there's a big problem that happens when you begin to isolate yourself from God and other people. To help you really kind of get a picture of this, let me put it to you this way. Have you ever watched lions hunting? You ever watch, like got on the National Geographic or the BBC, this great big world or whatever it is, and just watch how lions hunt. 
They literally get down as low as they can in the grass and they wait for an unsuspecting gazelle or buffalo or warthog or, you know, whatever to come wandering by itself by. Or they wait for the herd to pass and they wait for that one straggler that's all there by itself. And then once that particular animal is isolated from the herd, boom, the lion attacks. 1 Peter 5 eight says this, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You see, believe it or not, that God created us and because God created us, Satan hates us. And his desire is to do everything he can to get you away from other people, to isolate you. Because if he can isolate you, then he can attack. And notice what the verse says. It doesn't say looking for a group of people that he can attack. It doesn't say looking for a team of people he can attack. It says looking for someone. Because even though we are created to connect, we tend to drift towards isolation. Now, there are some very good reasons why we drift. We drift because of disagreements. Uh, it's an amazing thing when you begin to look at what can divide us. Do you know that I know people, and I'm sure you do too, who have broken off contact and conversation with family members because of the silliest things? Sometimes it's because of the church style. You know, they like the rock type, you know, contemporary stuff, but oh, they like the hymns, and well, they like King James, and they like, it's, it's ridiculous, but they break off contact and they won't have it. I've known people that literally won't speak to people because they cheer for a different sport team or, or, or they voted for a different person or even silly and petty arguments that they may have had 30 years ago. Satan loves to cause disagreements among people because then it separates and it isolates people and it makes it easier for him to attack. The second reason we tend to drift is discouragement. Sometimes the reason that we drift towards isolation is because of the stuff that we're struggling with internally. We feel overwhelmed, so we withdraw within ourselves. We get depressed, so we close ourselves off. We fail, so we remove ourselves from having to talk with other people about the failure. Satan loves to use your personal discouragement to make you believe that you are all alone. That what you are struggling with is unique to you and no one else could ever possibly understand. So we drift towards isolation. The third reason we drift is because of decisions. Every decision that we make has both negative and positive consequences. The decision that we make today determines the type of tomorrow that we actually get to enjoy. For example, if you decide today that you want to get into shape, that means you're going to have to carve out some time and eliminate something else in your schedule. If you decide that you want to spend more time with your spouse and your kids, your family, that means you've got to cut time somewhere else. And if we're not careful to be balanced in how we make these decisions, we can click quickly become obsessed or, or off balance where we spend all of our time in one or two areas. I'm sure that you've experienced this before when you've seen a couple start to date, right? And they eliminate all their other friends. They only just spend time together. And you're like, y'all need, <laughs> need some other interests besides just each other. Because what happens is, is it causes us to drift further and further away from other people who don't say, share those same obsessions. And we isolate ourselves from others who could balance us and give us better perspective. The last reason is disappointments. Um, I hate to tell you this, but people are going to let you down. People are going to betray you and people are going to disappoint you. I, if I'm the first one that actually has told you that, I'm, I'm really sorry. If you hadn't realized that already, then you've probably lived a very charmed life or you just aren't aware of your surroundings very often. The reality is when someone disappoints you, our natural reaction is to recoil, to, to pull back, to remove ourselves from them in the situation. And although this may be the right choice if someone is intentionally trying to harm you, if we isolate ourselves from everyone who might ever or has already disappointed us, we will find ourselves in a room all by ourselves. And guess what? You're going to disappoint yourself too. 
Because even though you were created for connection, we tend to drift towards isolation. So we've got to fight the drift. Now, over the next several weeks, we're going to teach you how to fight the drift. We're going to dive into each of these things that I'm about to share with you in great detail and how to use them as weapons when we feel that drift starting to happen. So we fight the drift by first forging strong bonds. You need to find people that you can walk with. The pain of walking alone is very real. The Bible says that we are to bond with God and we are to bond with other believers. We're to spend time with other people who share the same common passion for God and passion for people. I love this quote by Tony Evans. He says this, I hear people say, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And they're absolutely right. Salvation is through faith alone in Christ alone. But you don't have to go home to be married Stay away long enough and your relationship will be affected. <laughs> Colossians 3, 14 says this, Above all, clothe yourselves in love, which binds us together in perfect harmony. You cannot do life alone. So you've got to form strong bonds. And the Bible says the best way to do that is to love God and to love others. Because you also have to make sure that you're walking with the right people too. And that's the second way we fight. We fight by finding our tribe. We should strive to have a great bond with all of the body of Christ. But there are going to be some people that we just connect with on a deeper level. So we form strong bonds with kind of everybody, but then we find that group of people within that group of people that we just, we just connect with in a deeper way. It could be a shared passion or a common experience or just because you're in the same stage of life and you're trying to figure out how to get your three-year-old boy to stop peeing all over the bathroom wall. But you need to find people that you can serve with, you can spend time with, and you can be real with. The biggest encouragement I can give you for this one is to get involved in a small group. We're launching small groups again this fall and they'll be starting the week of September 12th. And for the first two sessions, we're going to all be doing the same study as a church. The reason we're doing this is because we want to have everyone within the small group experiencing the same teaching at the same time. So that when we're as a church working together, you're hearing the same stuff from week to week. That way, even if someone isn't in your small group, but they are in a small group, that you can actually both talk about what you're learning and be on the same page. The first one that we'll be taught, we'll be teaching is by a study by Mark Batterson called IF. And here's a quick preview of what we'll be learning throughout this series. What's your what if? If you stop and think about it, Everything begins with if. One little if can change everything. One little if can change anything. If God is for us, then who can be against us? And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I have a simple theory. It's bold predictions backed up by bold actions that changes the course of history, that changes the trajectory of our lives. You were once an idea in the mind of Almighty God. You are God's what if. So here's the question. What's your what if? What is your one God idea? What's your God-sized dream or your God-ordained passion? God is ordering your footsteps. He's preparing good works in advance, and the God who began a good work in you, He will carry it to completion. Our only regrets at the end of our lives will be the time, the talent, and the treasure that we left on the table, that we didn't give back to God. Those will be the if-onlys that will haunt us to the grave and beyond. I'm convinced of this. When everything is said and done, all that matters is hearing God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Doesn't that sound great? You think about this idea of if and how God can use that to change everything in your life. 
But I'd also like to let you know that we are looking for more group leaders and host homes as well. If you're interested, just let us know. You can just shoot us an email or reply on your digital connect card. And we're gonna be doing a small group leader training on Sunday night, August 22nd. And we'd love for you to be a part of it if you are interested. The very last way that we'll be talking about the last week of this series about the weapon that you can use is the weapon of your voice. So freeing your voice, that's the third way that you can fight the drift. You need to learn how to release the power of your story. Your story is important and it matters. And if you're willing to share your story, it will make a difference in someone else's life because there is power in your story. Maybe it's a divorce that almost destroyed you, the job that almost broke you, the addiction that almost took you out, the losses of a loved one that, that devastated you, or the betrayal that rocked you. You know, I love the song that Kate has been teaching us as a church over the last several months called My Testimony. And there's a line in there that I feel so powerful. And it goes something like this. What the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. Did you know that that comes from a statement made by Joseph to his brothers? You know, Joseph in the Old Testament, uh, the latter part of the book of Genesis, was a man that God used to do amazing things. But his brothers hated him. His, his brothers, uh, you know, treated him horribly. They threw him in a pit. They sold him into slavery. And then other stuff happened to him. It was all sorts of things. And so finally, God elevated him to the, the point where he was second in command of all of Egypt. And he foresaw, because God showed him that there would be a massive famine in the land. And because of his pre-actions pre, uh, pre and taking things into, under control, he was able to save millions and millions of lives. Until one day, his brothers showed up and they figured out it was him. And then later on, they're like, please don't kill us, Joseph. And Joseph said these words to him in Genesis 50, verse 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. You see, the evil that they intended in Joseph's life, God used for good. And it wasn't just good for Joseph, it was good for everyone around Joseph. I believe that if you're willing to release the power of your story, even the bad and the hard parts, then it can have a life-saving effect on the people around you as well. And you will actually draw people closer to you and help others fight the drift. Because even though we're created for connection, we all tend to drift towards isolation. So we need to fight the drift. So I challenge you to really consider joining a small group this fall. It will make a difference in your life and could easily make a difference in someone else's life as well. And I'm gonna encourage you to be here throughout this whole series as we'll teach you how to fight the drift by forging strong bonds, finding your tribe, and freeing your voice. Because we were created for connection, but we all tend to drift towards isolation. So don't isolate yourself this week, and I'll see you.